What's going on guys? This is Real Deal Fantasy HQ with your boy LQ and today's episode we talking week 3 start or sit. So let's get right into the episode. So today for week 3 we're going to be talking about start and sit basically going over some guys that have some concern really some type of bounce back or just a clear cut just start without a question just start and forget about it so first up I got Ryan Fitzpatrick Fitzpatrick magic they're calling him Fitz magic whatever it is over there in Tampa Bay now Winston may be out of a job pretty soon now, if you guys didn't pick him up off the waiver wire in week two I kind of feel bad for you I'm pretty much thinking that he's going to keep this ball rolling and Winston's going to come back to the bench so with Fitz playing the way he's playing and he's lighting up the scoreboards I'm taking that gamble this week with him still keeping the train going now he put up tons of tons of points now I know guys are looking like oh it's Ryan Fitzpatrick he's hot and then he's cold it's just a cycle I'm going to ride this hot train until it ends. I'm going to take that gamble this week. I like Fitz's matchup this week. People may be saying that Steelers right now, they have the circus going on, the distraction, but I do believe the defense can still play tough. But I'm going to ride this hype train with Ryan Fitzpatrick until it ends, and I'm all in on Fitzpatrick this week. Next up, we got Case Keenum. Now, last week he looked like a disappointment to most fantasy owners. On paper, he had the better matchup, and it looked like he just didn't go through with the game plan. Now Emmanuel Sanders came off 135 yards, 10 catches on 11 targets people. So it looked like on paper that he was going to rip that defense apart. Raiders don't have a pass rush right now. They barely have DBs. They're kind of sus. So on paper Keenum looked like he was going to excel, but it did not happen. So this week I am sitting Case Keenum being that he has a tough game against the Ravens on the road and I'm thinking the Ravens are going to come back, bounce back and play tough this week against Case Keenum being that they do have some type of pass rush and they haven't allowed much fantasy points for QBs going into their games. I mean they only had one that even probably touched top 15 so Case Keenum you're getting the bench this week. Next up got Will Fuller. Now this guy is amazing when healthy takes the top off the defense he's a deep threat on the other side of uh, D hop so I'm pretty much liking his matchup this week with the Giants now Giants look kind of weak on defense right now looks like things are falling apart but I do think Janoris Jenkins will be following D hop this game so that only leaves Will Fuller more room to work now with Will Fuller healthy we all know the guy can play but his injury does play in the back of my mind and he could potentially get hurt. He has a minor hamstring that he's dealing with this week. But I expect him to take some time off and rest this week with practice. Where he won't aggravate it and be ready to go Sunday. So Will Fuller is a start for me for sure. But let's hope and pray he stays healthy. Next up we got the guy Tyler Boyd on the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm probably going to get some heat for this. But I am sitting him against the Panthers. Hear me out. Thursday night games are weird to me. I never really even believed in them. Like, I take them with a grain of salt. Because you're coming into a short week. It can either work with you or against you for teams. And the question is, can Andy Dalton stay this hot? Or can Tyler keep up the good work? It's just some questions that I'm willing to take a gamble on sitting him this week. Now, don't get me wrong. Thursday night games are fun to watch. But... A lot of things happen in Thursday night games, either high scores or blowouts, guys you never heard of standing out, and it's like, it's just what Thursday night games are, it's just, it is what it is, but they're here to stay, I like the color rush, hopefully they stay too, but back to Tyler Board, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked, but I just don't believe in Andy Dalton, I'ma just say it, maybe I'm sitting Tyler for the simple fact I don't believe in Andy Dalton. I don't think that this hot streak that he has going on will keep going. You know, the three touchdowns to AJ. Look great. Look great against the Ravens. This is a division game, so you should look that good. But I'm thinking I'm taking the game on sitting him because of my feelings towards Andy Dalton. Now, AJ Green, start and forget about it. Tyler, think about it because of Andy Dalton. Now, again, I'm probably going to get some heat for this, but hey, it's my opinion. I'm sitting Tyler. Next up, we're going to be talking about Kenny Galladay for the Detroit Lions. Now this guy 
he was like my low key sleeper going to the draft, but I didn't really see it. But now it's looking like the guy's breaking out. Now, Kenny Galladay is shaking up that depth chart over in Detroit. Now, he's getting more targets. He's outperforming Marvin Jones right now. He can even smell like a wide receiver one for most guys. He's averaging 20 points per game right now, and it looks like he's excelling in the slot. Now, his matchup this week is against the Patriots, who had Blake Bortles basically looking like Tom Brady. Now, the Patriots are ranked 25th pass defense with receivers in the slot. So, Kenny Galladay playing the slot. I can only see him to have one of his best weeks this week. He is the definite start this week. Now, Kenny Galladay is going to be sitting in that slop where he could rip apart the Patriots' defense. Stafford needs to go into this week focus. He needs to show that week one was just a hiccup and he could bounce back stronger than ever. This is his opportunity to hit Kenny Galladay on most of his targets in the slot because the Patriots are weak right now in that position. So, week after week, it looks like Kenny Galladay is going to be a short start. So I'm starting him this week, and I'm forgetting about it Sunday. Next up, I'm going to be putting these two guys together. Now, their situations are very similar. Gio Bernard and Tevin Coleman. Now, they both have great matchups this week. Now, you got Tevin Coleman going against the Saints. That should be an NFC South shootout. Now, I'm pretty sure that he'll probably see 20 to 25 touches. He really doesn't have a shadow behind him, behind him that will take away those touches. Same thing with Gio. Now, both their running back ones are out right now with two to four weeks so I'm sure they're gonna take this time this opportunity to take the job and run with it now Tevin Coleman I could see his pass catching ability and Geo's pass catching ability play major factors so they can have big weeks this week for them both and I'm sure you got both of them off the waiver wire or if you got Tevin Coleman stash now Geo is definitely on the waiver wire so when Joe Mixon went down the first thing I did was go get Geo picking up Geo in week two waiver wire was probably his chance to be a waiver wire hero for most of the mixing owners now Gio he's gonna have to show that he could take the early down third down goal line touches he is the guy right now over in Cincinnati and I'm actually looking forward to seeing both these guys be top 15 running backs this week show that they could take on the workload and then next week and the week after that they could be must starts next up unfortunately I have to sit this guy I hate saying it but Royce Freeman the preseason stud, it's like we all know the guy can play, but unfortunately with Lindsey in the picture, it doesn't look like Lindsey slowing down anytime soon. So Royce Freeman is too much of a gamble to start this week or the week after until we see some type of decline in Lindsey's play or Denver shows that they can use them both and they split carries evenly or something. They got to do something with this guy. This guy is a poor sitting in the garage ready to go, but it, it just looks like Lindsey is going to, take this ride and go with it until he slows down or <laughs> injury god forbid but just saying R Royce Freeman is a stud like we all seen his preseason hype before the draft hype it, everybody was talking about this guy all the ESPN guys all the guys that are on the YouTube channels everybody was talking about this guy I was keeping an eye on him I was looking to get him in the later rounds but then he started eating in the preseason it's like yo this guy is gonna go high like his ranking just jumped week after week after preseason, preseason, preseason game. But this guy, Lindsey, just comes out of nowhere and just wipes that whole hype away. It's like, what can you do? But unfortunately, with the Ravens this week, it's it's a gamble starting Freeman. So I'm going to have to sit him. It sucks to say, but I'm going to have to sit him. Next up, we're going to be talking about Trey Burton, tight end for the Bears. Now, I know everybody was happy last week to see him finally get on the board. I know the Burton owners were just like, please, please score, do something. But he had five catches and the touchdown, which is great to see. Now, he has the Cardinals this week. I love the matchup. Now, Cardinals are allowing 14 points per game for tight ends right now in PPR leagues. So that's great news for Burton. That's great news for the Bears. That's great news for all the Burton owners. So... I want you guys to start Burton this week and have high hopes for him. I really don't see any chances of the Cardinals, you know, being good this week because they're, they're looking terrible. They got blown out by the Rams last week. So I hope the Bears can seek and attack their weakness at tight end and Burton can get on the scoreboard again this week. Next up, I like this guy a lot, Mike Williams. He was my sleeper this year, but unfortunately this week I have to bench him going against the L.A. Rams. Now their defense 
It's looking crazy right now, people. The Rams are the real deal this year. Not being biased, I am a Rams fan. I just watch the game and I see what I see. Now, what is going on with Mike Williams is that he has Marcus Peters on that defense and he has Tlaib on that defense. Now, with either or of them covering him, it's going to be kind of hard for him to put up, you know, the 10 points per game that he has done in week one and two. So, with Rivers, I really see him struggling in this game they're gonna have to make it to the red zone for Mike Williams to show any type of chance of scoring or getting on the board now with that being said I'm not saying it's a clear-cut sit but I do like Mike Williams his upside I really I really like the kid I have high hopes for him I was really upset that he got hurt last year I'm glad he's healthy this year but it's too much of a gamble going into this week I know he's hot right now not hot really but 10 points, eh, whatever. Flex, ugh, okay. But it's just too much of a gamble this week. He's probably going to get knocked back down to earth, being that the Rams are just slapping and punching people in the face <laughs> in the second half of quarters. The defense is just too scary for me to start Mike Williams. So Mike Williams is getting the bench this week. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Start James Conner. Next up. David Johnson, what is going on with you, man? I know I said in previous episodes that, you know, he lost a piece of his O-line, but it's kind of like, damn, man, you're taking a huge decline. Now, I'm not saying he's a bust yet. I'm not saying for the David Johnson's owners to really panic yet, but it is something to take a note of. It's really questionable of starting him this week against the Bears with Khalil Mack just tearing up the place. So... I hate to say it or even utter the words, but I'm sitting David Johnson this week. Like, I know a lot of people won't do it, but it's kind of like you have to. Like, that that old line is a mess. The Cardinals alone is a mess. And with them having the QB change floating around, it doesn't look like chemistry is going to be there, you know, the first game. It's a head scratcher. It's, it's really unfortunate this is happening, DJ, after he just got the bag, just got paid. And coming back, you know, healthy now, and he has to deal with this train wreck of a team that's going on. So, ultimately, I don't even know if I could do it. I have him in one of my leagues, but David Johnson is getting the bench this week against the Chicago Bears. It's just too scary, man. If you have other options, I would seek to it. Or you could just be as stubborn as me and start them anyway. And just <laughs> burn, basically. So, ultimately, you got to think about it. It's something to question now. Are the David Johnson owners going to panic now? Is it something to really think about now? Is it something to just worry week after week after week? As this team probably goes 0-3, 0-4, 0-5, 0-6, 1-7. Is, is it time to panic yet? I mean, I would sell him now. I'll get whatever you can out of him right now. That's probably what I'm probably going to do. But David Johnson's a head scratcher right now. And being that the schedule doesn't get any easier for these guys. And then they play the Rams twice a year. They play the Seahawks twice. And... San Fran, eh, whatever. <laughs> he might struggle against them too, but still. David Johnson, definitely a head scratcher, man. It sucks. It sucks what's happening to him. Just got paid. He's healthy now. He can't get it going. But I'll probably make a separate video on if David Johnson owner should panic after this massacre Sunday. <laughs> so that wraps up another great episode of Real Deal Fantasy HQ with your boy LQ. I want you guys to like and subscribe for me, leave a comment below, and Sundays in the morning I will be doing start and sit on both my pages on Facebook, Instagram, and even on sleeper.com. So I will be doing start and sit questions. You can email me, you can message me directly on any social media network. I'll have them after the video, but I will be trying to get into doing live live streamings also. So I want you guys to like and subscribe for me. And thank you for watching another great episode of RDFHQ. That's something new that I'm doing now. <laughs> Peace.